Hello everybody. My name is Dr. Rajal Shah. Today it's my honor and privilege to welcome and introduce my friend and colleague Dr. Ming Zhao to this YouTube video channel. Dr. Ming Zhao is the chair of the Department of Pathology at the Tufts School of Medicine in Boston, Massachusetts. He is a world-renowned GU pathologist with many seminal contributions to the field. So today he is going to show us how you can utilize a pattern-based approach towards a prostate needle biopsy interpretation. Uh, this is an additional new chapter that we have introduced in our book that we wrote together. Uh, and uh, he is going to specifically talk about the cribriform pattern, which can be quite challenging in uh, practice. So without any further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Ming Zhao to the channel. Thank you, Raj. Prostate equipiform lesions are those glands that show proliferation of glandular epithelial cells to form lumen spanning mass with distinctive spaces or holes in between cells, imparting a Swiss cheese appearance. It can be seen in a wide range of prostate lesions, including benign, such as central zone glands, clear cell equipiform hyperplasia, reactive atypia, and basal cell hyperplasia. Pre-malignant lesions, such as equipiform high-grade pain, intraductal proliferation, such as intraductal carcinoma, and atypical intraductal proliferation, and invasive carcinoma, such as equipiform carcinoma and ductal adenocarcinoma. These lesions, although they share the same equipiform morphology, but their biological behavior could not be more different. So the correct diagnosis is critical for the patient management. This is approach I use when I look at a prostate equipiform lesion. First, I will go to high power to look for the cytological atypia in secretory cells, including nuclear enlargement, coarse chromatin, prominent nucleoli, and pleomorphism. If I see none of these features, I know that I'm looking at a benign lesion with equipiform morphology, such as central zone glands, clear cell equipiform hyperplasia, and basal cell hyperplasia. Central zone forms the base of the prostate gland. Therefore, central zone glands are seen in the biopsies taken from the base of the prostate. At the low power, you can see central zone glands have a complex architecture uh, with quiverform pattern and uh, Roman bridges. At high power, you can see these glands are composed of pseudo-stratified nuclei with eosinophilic cytoplasm and uh, very prominent basal cells around these glands. However, you should not see nuclear atypia in these glands. Central zone glands may be mistaken for high-grade pain, but they are unlikely to be confused with the prostate cancer. Clear cell equipiform hyperplasia is part of the benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH. So they are seen in transition zone and sampled in the transurethral resection specimens. In equipiform hyperplasia, you will see nodular collection of these quibiform glands that have clear or eosinophilic cytoplasm. They also have very prominent basal cell layers around these glands. However, you shouldn't see nuclear atypia in these glands. They may be mistaken for high-grade pain, but they are not likely to be confused with prostate cancer but they may be mistaken for intraductal carcinoma if the quiverform hyperplasia is florid and is composed of many large uh, quiverform glands that are crowded uh, together and have uh, very prominent intraglandular uh, papillary perforation. Basal cell hyperplasia is also part of BPH, so it is seen uh, in transition zone and uh, transurethral resection specimens. At low power, you can see 
uh, this nodular proliferation of blue atrophic glands and nests. Uh, they can form several different architectural patterns, including small glandular pattern, which may be mistaken for prostate cancer. And sometimes you can also see these uh, a quiverform architecture as well. At the high power, uh, the, uh, the glands in the basal cell hyperplasia are composed of multiple layers of the cells with uh, basal looking or scant cytoplasm. So when you look at uh, the prostate quiverform lesions, if you do see cytological atypia in secretory cells, again, nuclear enlargement, coarse chromatin, prominent nucleoli, and pleomorphism, then you are looking at a typical quiverform lesion. You need to think about the four lesions, quiverform cancer, ductal carcinoma, quiverform high-grade pain, and carcinoma. How do you distinguish between these four lesions? You need to pay attention to these four pathological features, number of quiverform glands, whether basal cells are present or not, morphology of the atypical quiverform lesions, and P10 loss and ERG gene fusion. For example, in the quiverform high-grade pain, you, all, you typically see one or few atypical quiverform glands. Basal cells are present, nuclei are uniform, you don't see P10 loss or ERG gene fusion. In introductory carcinoma, basal cells are present, you will see one of these features, solid or dense quiverform architecture, comedial necrosis, or pleomorphic nuclei. Majority of the IDC glands have P10 loss, and ERG gene fusion. In quiverform carcinoma, basal cells are absent, and in ductal carcinoma, uh, the cancer glands are composed of columnar-shaped cells with stratified elongated nuclei. Basal cells are usually negative, but can be focally positive in some cases. Here are several examples of a quiverform carcinoma of a different size, shape, and contour. But remember, all quiverform carcinoma glands should be graded as pattern 4. In ductal adenal carcinomas, I use a very strict diagnostic criteria. Only when the cancer glands are lined with columnar-shaped cells with pseudostratified elongated nuclei. I will make the diagnosis of ductal carcinoma. In majority of cases, ductal carcinoma is actually uh, mixed with the conventional acinal carcinoma. It's graded as pattern 4 or 5 if the necrosis is present. This is an example of quiverform high-grade ping in a radical prostatectomy specimen. You can see a single uh, quiverform lesion uh, with uh, round and a smooth contour. At the high power, the nuclei are uniform, uh, they have a small nucleoli. But I want to emphasize this, quiverform hybrid ping should not be diagnosed in the prostate biopsy. Instead, if you see a quiverform, a typical quiverform lesion in the prostate biopsy, it should be diagnosed as atypical intraductal proliferation uh, for the proper patient management because these patients often need immediate prostate biopsy. I will not talk too much about intraductal carcinoma of the prostate uh, because uh, Dr. Shah uh, made a excellent YouTube tutorial. If you're interested in this topic, I encourage you to check out that tutorial. But I do want to uh, show you the diagnostic criteria for uh, introductory carcinoma uh, proposed by Gore and Epstein, which is the most commonly used diagnostic uh, criteria. So for any large glands with lumen spanning atypical cells and preserved basal cells, if you see any of the four features listed here, 
solid architecture, dense cribriform, non-focal comedial necrosis that involves uh, more than one gland or marked atypical nuclei. That's at least six times of the adjacent benign nuclei. Then you can make a diagnosis of intraductal carcinoma in the prostate biopsies. In summary, uh, prostate cribriform lesions comprise a wide range of lesions from normal to pre-malignant to highly aggressive lesions such as intraductal carcinoma. When you are looking at atypical cribriform lesions, look for number of the cribriform glands, presence of basal cells, morphology of the cribriform glands to help with the diagnosis. And P10 and ERG gene fusion status may help with the diagnosis. Dr. Shaw and I recently published the second edition of our prostate biopsy book, Prostate Biopsy Interpretation, an Illustrated Guide. In this book, we used many flowcharts, algorithm, tables, and pictures to illustrate the steps in the diagnosis and the differential diagnosis of a common prostate lesion. We also have a brand new chapter, chapter 16, pattern-based approach to prostate biopsy interpretation. In this chapter, we present commonly seen prostate uh, uh, morphological patterns uh, commonly seen in prostate biopsies and how we can use uh, this morphological pattern-based approach to arrive at the correct diagnosis. So if you're interested, uh, uh, I encourage you to check out this book. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ming, for such an excellent presentation. Thank you.